My God, my God, my God. The presence of the Lord is here. I said the glory of God is in this place. Somebody give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. My God. I tell you, you know, when I was coming here, you may be seated. When I was coming here, I thought I would have to behave myself. Because I'm coming to a church that I see that's opposite of my color, you know. So I thought I need to behave myself. Apostle Felix, respect yourself. You're not in your church, but I came here and found something totally different. My goodness. Woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Woo, Jesus. Mm, this church is full of the Holy Ghost. This church has people that love God. I said this church is full of people of power. Hallelujah. My God. Woo. Man, 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 man. What a night is going to be tonight. <laughs> Well, I came here to impart something on you. Uh, Peter says, such as I have, give I unto you. So tonight is going to be such as I have, give I unto you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, before I start ministering tonight, I just want to give honor to whom honor is due. I tell you, you have a great man of God in this house. You have a great woman of God in this house. I tell you, church, you know, like he said, we met and we just connected. And you know, every time that happens to me, it means that someone and I have the same thing in the spirit. We are alike in the spirit. And so we just connected. And I just want to honor Prophet Leon and his dear wife, beautiful people good people. Amen, somebody. I can tell you, you have the best in this house. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You have the best. God has given you the best. Please honor them. Take care of them. Make sure they are well. Make sure all is well with them. Do your best to make them comfortable. Amen, somebody. I said you have the best in this house. Amen. Praise God. I salute you. I honor you both. And I love you. Amen. Amen. To the leadership of the church, the elders, and I don't know what you guys do with deacons, deaconesses, but this house, my goodness, you guys are on fire. Oh, yeah. Now, now. Wow. Wow. Now, I need to have a meeting with you after this conference. I want to know what you give to these people. These guys are crazy, man, in this house. I tell you. Yo. <laughs> man. Boy. Now, yeah, yeah. This is something I need to take back to House of Treasures. I've learned something today. I've met a crazy set of Christians. People who love God, who are ready to give it all for Jesus. Give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. You may be seated. All right, let's get right quick into the word of God and, um, and we'll do what God has for us tonight. Give me the book of Luke chapter 1 and verse 19. Luke chapter 1 and verse 19, if I can have it on my screen. All right. The Bible said, then the angel answered him and said, I am Gabriel who stands in the presence of God and to speak to you. And I was sent and was sent to speak to you. It says I was sent. Okay, right there. Okay. All right. I was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings. I was sent to speak to you glad tidings. I've been sent here tonight to speak to you glad tidings. 
I came out from the presence of God to speak to somebody that no matter what the enemy is doing in your life or has done in your life, there is a turnaround tonight. I said there is a turnaround tonight. If you believe it, shout a loud amen. Glory to God. Church, I've been sent tonight. You know, there are men who went on their own. But there are men who are sent. And I can tell you tonight, I've been sent to you. Somebody here is bouncing back today. Somebody is getting their miracle tonight. Somebody is receiving their healing tonight. You are not living here the same way you came. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout amen. amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. What a privilege, what an opportunity for us to gather together in your presence. Lord, the one thing we know is that anyone that appears before you never leaves empty. And so tonight, load us with your glory. Load us with the manifestation of your presence. Let there be miracle signs and wonders. Confirm every word preached with signs following. Thank you for blessing us, Lord. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And the church say, Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Now, church of God, the first thing I want to say is that uh, when you find two believers who are operating in different dimensions, the reason is because they are operating on two different levels of God's presence. Um, you know, in scripture, they tell, the, the Bible tells us of three ways that God, you know, God's presence manifests in our lives. The, the Bible tells us that the presence of God is all over the world. I mean, his presence is everywhere. David was speaking. He said, Whither shall I hide from your presence? He said, If I go down the deep, you are there. If I go up the heavens, that's your throne. Everywhere I go, in the darkest of the dark, you are there. His presence is omnipresent. Somebody say amen. amen. But you see, even though God is present everywhere, he doesn't act everywhere. He only acts under certain conditions. And then the second place where the Bible tells us that you can find the presence of God is when two or three are gathered in his name. And so we are gathered tonight in the name of the Lord. That means his presence is in this place. Whenever two or three are gathered in the name of the Lord, it doesn't matter what the devil is doing. It doesn't matter what the enemy has done. We don't care whether there was COVID-19 or not. As long as we are gathered in the name of the Lord, he is in our midst. Somebody said the presence of God is here. All right. And then the third one is that when they gathered in the tabernacle, the Bible says God, the glory of God descended. That even the priest could not minister. It comes to a point where God will show up in our midst and you can't even move. You can't do anything. I'm in the presence of God. When that presence hits you, I don't know about you. Sometimes I've experienced God in my own personal private room where the Lord hits my room and I cannot move. The glory of God descends and I weep like a baby. I mean, I've had several encounters with the presence of God. Church, and that's why you need his presence. Let me tell you, that's the difference between two believers. It's the different dimensions of God's presence that we operate in. God is not a respecter of persons. The moment that you are able to connect with him on a certain dimension, you'll find his presence move in your life. So tonight, I want to teach you on the benefits of God's presence. The benefit, because you see, until you have a revelation of the value of a thing, you may never pursue it. So when you don't know what something carries, I mean, if I tell you tonight that my watch is a million US dollars, uh, I'm just using that as an example. <laughs> Before you rob me tonight, glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Okay. But I mean, if I tell you that my watch is a million US dollars, and, and then I tell you that I want to give you a gift, ask me of anything. Because you already know the value of the watch, what will you ask me for? The watch. Am I talking to someone? Now, now, that's how the presence of God is. When you know the value of God's presence, you will pursue it. You will seek for it. Because you really, the desire to pursue something will not be there until you know the value. You know the weight. You know what he carries. Church, it is the presence of God that makes the difference between two men of God. 
you can find one man of God here and man, another man of God here. What makes the difference is the presence of God. What makes the difference? You find so many churches are not growing. They're not operating in the supernatural. I mean, there are churches today who are saying that, you know, there is no supernatural, there is no healing, all those things. You guys, are, I, I don't know which church they are. But I heard Joel say in the last days, it shall come to pass that the spirit of the Lord will descend upon us and your sons and daughters shall, pro shall prophesy. Your old young men shall see visions and the old men shall dream dreams. Church, we are in that era where the spirit of God is here. The Holy Ghost is in our midst. The presence of God is in our midst. Can I hear an amen, somebody? So when you understand the value of a thing, you will place demand on what that thing is. And so the reason the church has not really operated in that level because we don't know what the presence of God carries. When you understand what the presence of God can do, you will pursue it. You will go after it. There's a reason why Jesus says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be running after you. So there is something you can pursue that when you have it, every other thing will follow. Am I communicating? There's something and it's called the presence of God. What is the number one benefit of the presence of God? The presence of God attracts prosperity. Write that down. Because many people are pursuing prosperity. But they don't understand that there is something a man can have. Prosperity will just start following you. That prosperity is a byproduct of the presence of God. Give me Genesis chapter 39 and verse 1 to 4. Genesis 39 verse 1 to 4. I want to start with that. The presence of God attracts prosperity. That when you have God's presence, it attracts well to you. It attracts things to you. The Bible said that the angel came to meet Zachariah in the temple. Now, at this point, Zachariah was a priest. And in those days, you know, the, the priest that go into the Holy of Holies, when you appear there and you have sins, they have to tie like a rope around you and take it to the outer court. So that if you die there, they will pull you out because you cannot enter the presence of God in those years. Now, now Zachariah was there. The Bible said that his, his uh, assignment was to burn incense. And then now he is in the presence of God. And then an angel shows up and said, I am Gabriel. And I just came from the presence of God. So, Zachariah, where are you? Where is Zachariah then? He's supposed to be in the Holy of Holies. Where the presence, the Shekinah glory of God is. But then the angel says, I am Gabriel. And I am from the presence of God. That means that there are dimensions of the presence of God. And the moment Zacharias saw the angel, he was troubled. And the Bible said, the angel said to him, fear not, for I came with glad tidings. Your wife that has been barren is going to bear you a son. So every time the angel of his presence shows up, something must change in your life. So tonight, that angel is here right now. The presence of God is in this place right now. Everything is shifting in your life. Somebody shout amen. amen. So the first thing he does is prosperity. Let's read Genesis chapter 39 and verse 1 to 4. The Bible says, Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. Next verse. And the Lord was with Joseph. And he was what? A successful man. The Lord was with Joseph. Because of that, the result of the Lord being with him is that he was a successful man. The King James Version says, and he was a prosperous man. Church, if you really want to prosper in this kingdom, desire his presence. Seek for his presence. Covet his presence. I'm telling you, the presence of God can change your financial situation. Stop seeking for mundane things. Stop pursuing money. Stop pursuing cars. Stop pursuing houses. Pursue his presence. Am I talking to somebody? Pursue his presence. The moment you have his presence, everything will follow you. He said he was a prosperous man. 
He was a successful man. What does it mean to be successful? What does it mean to be prosperous? It means to advance. It means to excel. It means to do well in life. He was a prosperous man. Now, how can somebody be a slave and yet a prosperous man? It doesn't, it's so paradoxical. But the truth of the matter is, when you carry God's presence, it doesn't matter where they put you. Put me in Potiphar's house, I will prosper. Put me in jail, I will prosper. Let COVID-19 show up, I will prosper. Let there be sickness, I will prosper. Whatever the enemy does, I will still prosper. I will still prosper. Nothing can stop me from prospering. Why? Because the Lord is with me. Look at the next verse, verse 3. Keep going, verse 3. Quickly. And his master saw, his master saw that the Lord was with him. Meaning that people can see when you carry God's presence. I ne- you know, I, I never thought that people can see when you carry God's presence. Now, I, I used to be a businessman, a very successful businessman in the real estate. And, and in those years when we used to go to the auctions, one of the days, one Muslim imam, one guy with his beard almost this long, He just showed up and came to me. He couldn't hold it anymore. He said, there is something different about you. It was the presence of God. When that presence is on you, people will see it. Presidents will see it. I'm telling you, captains of industries will see it. He says, and his master saw that the Lord was with him. And that the Lord made everything he did to prosper. Everything. 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 That means everything in your hands can prosper. Your business can prosper. Your job can prosper. Your marriage can prosper. Your children can prosper. Everything around your life can prosper. Why? Because of God's presence. When His presence is there, it makes everything to prosper. So the reason behind Joseph's prosperity was not because he was good looking or he had degrees. He could have had master's degree, PhD, The Bible didn't put all that there. He said the reason he prospered, the reason behind his prosperity is that God was with him. And tonight there will will be an impartation. There's going to be an impartation of God's presence. You are going to carry that presence out of this place. As you live here today, by the time you get to work tomorrow, all the devils will be bowing to you. Everybody will be saying something changed about you. Because the glory of God is coming on you tonight. Somebody shout an amen. amen. My God, look at verse 4. And I don't know, amen, you guys, you guys can pull something out of a man. I tell you. My God. You know, the Bible says Jesus saw their faith. You, you can see faith. Man, I can see faith in this house. I tell you. Boy, oh God. Anything is possible in this place. Anything is possible here. And I'm telling you, your possibilities are coming to you. Somebody shout an amen. Amen. What's the second benefit of God's presence? God's presence gives you access to mercy and favor. Mercy and favor. Write that down. Give me the book of uh, Psalm 102. In fact, the scripture we read in Genesis... If you uh, go down to, let me look for that in my scripture. I don't think I wrote that down. Genesis chapter 39. Maybe check around verse 25. Check around verse 25. Genesis, same Genesis 39, around verse 25. I'm not sure, but let me just check on my Bible quick. Is it 21? All right. It says, yeah. And the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy. The Lord did what? He showed him mercy and he gave him what else? So you see, favor and mercy work together. Because in Psalm 102 and verse 13, the Bible says that thou shall arise. Thou will arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is when? Now. So church, today is your day of favor. You are living here with the favor of God. I say you are living here with the favor of God. Somebody shout, I receive it. 
favor and mercy works together. Anytime God wants to do favor or, or give you favor, he makes sure that he gives you mercy first. Mercy goes ahead of you. And that's why, church, you must never compare yourself with somebody else. Because we are operating on different levels of mercy. And the reason is because of certain things we've done in the presence of God. Now, church, you can have two guys. One goes, commits adultery. And the Lord forgives him. Let him go as if he never did anything wrong. Now, I'm not soliciting that you go commit adultery. But this guy commits adultery. And God just blinks, just closes his eyes as if he never did anything. And then you find another guy who looks at that guy. And not knowing that this same guy. His father was a man of God. His grandfather was a man of God. They built God a house. They built, they've done so many things for God. And God decides, I'm going to use the mess. I'm going to take out my mercy and cover that person. Now, on the other hand, you came from a home where nobody served God. Everybody was in covenant with the devil. And you look at that guy and say, I'm going to commit adultery like him. You'll be surprised. That you will not wake up the next morning. Satan will take you out. So church, you must understand how God's mercy works. So, I mean, look at David and Saul. Church, for goodness sake, I don't even think Saul did much more than what David did. David slept with somebody's wife, killed a guy. Saul was told, go and fight against Amalek. Take everything, kill the king, kill everybody, slaughter, make sure nothing remains. And he decided to spare the sheep and brought back the king. And God denied him. He said, the Bible said that God said, the throne has been taken away from you. Do you know today, we shouldn't be talking about the throne of David. In fact, we shouldn't be talking about the God of David or the keys of David. It should have been the God of Saul. The keys of Saul. The throne was supposed to be secured for Saul. But because of mercy, God is releasing mercy on your life today. The kind of mercy that secures favor is coming on you today. Because David understood something about God. He looked at God in Psalm 51 and he says, Cast me not away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. He understood. He said, you can take the throne. You can take my cars. You can take my houses. Take my wife. Take my children. But don't take your presence. Because when I have your presence, I have everything I need. Am I talking to somebody? So, so he understood the presence of God. He knew, God knew that this guy was seeking for my presence. Say, don't take your presence from me. You can take any other thing. I don't care what you take from my life. Just keep your presence. Cast me not away from your presence. Take not your Holy Spirit from me. He said, restore to me the joy of my salvation and renew a right spirit. Renew your Holy Ghost in me. Renew the right spirit. I went to the wrong direction because I had the wrong spirit. But tonight, renew the right spirit within me. Is somebody listening to me tonight? He understood God's mercy. Amen, somebody? Church, the mercy of God is secured by his presence. The level of presence that you carry will secure God's mercy, which eventually gives you favor. And church, I can tell you, you don't want to live this life as a Christian without favor. Listen to me. If you don't have favor, you won't survive this world. Because Satan has designed this world to work against every believer. The only thing that will help you to survive, succeed in this world, in this present world, is the favor of God. Where men will do things for you, they don't know why they're doing it. Have you ever had somebody do something for you and they don't understand why they're doing it? An unbeliever will give you money. I say, I hate you, but I can't help it. Uh, am I talking to someone? I mean, they hate you, but they still promote you. They hate you, but they still give you gifts. They hate you, but they still give you the contract. Am I talking to somebody? Why? Because you carry favor on your life. So what the presence of God does is that it secures mercy. It secures mercy. Church, you need to have the mercy of God on your side. Blind Bartimaeus understood this and he cried out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. I need your mercy. 
And when Jesus had mercy, he turned and said, bring him. Call him. The Bible says he came immediately and he received this miracle. You will secure God's mercy tonight. I said you will secure God's mercy tonight. Number three, what does God's presence do? God's presence gives you rest. It gives you rest on every side. Give me Exodus 33 and verse 13. Exodus 33 and verse 13, quickly. He says, now therefore I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way that I may know you and that I may find grace in your sight. And consider this nation is your people. Next verse. And God answered. He's saying to God, show me your way. God says, my presence will go with you. And I, as a result of my presence, you will have rest on every side. Because of my presence, you will secure rest. I mean, there's many believers who are depressed. Who are, for, I mean, they are under all kinds of oppression. Many believers can't sleep at night. It is the presence of God that will secure rest. Just seek for God's presence. Seek to be in his presence. I can tell you no demon can molest you in the presence of God. He said mountains keep at his presence. They skip like rams. He says the, the sea saw him and the sea fled. The sea saw the presence of God and he took off. That's what the presence of God, it gives you rest on every side. It gives you rest. You must find yourself in the presence of God. Anxiety is not of God. It's not of God. When you are anxious, up at night, looking in the ceiling, counting the hours for the day to break, I know we all have been there. Oh yes, because of the pressures of life. But I can tell you the solution to that. It is the presence of God. When you have God's presence, you can rest at night. You can secure sleep at night. Am I talking to somebody? Jesus puts it this way. He said, he that sent me in John 8, 29. He said, he that sent me is with me. The Father had not left me alone. He says, for I do always the things that please him. When God is with you, there is no fear around you. I'm telling you there is no fear. Church, when God is with you, you will sleep like a baby. No, you know no devil can harass you. You have confidence that God is with you. Church, I've been in situations many times where they thought I would die. But here am I. Am I talking to somebody? Because God's presence secures rest for the believers. 1 Kings chapter 5 and verse 3. 1 Kings 5 and verse 3. We'll read verse 4 as well. 1 Kings 5 and verse 3. He said, you know how my father David could not build a house for the name of the Lord, his God, because of the wars which he fought, which... Sorry, which were fought against him on every side until the Lord put his foes under the sole of his feet. Next verse. But now, somebody say, but now. I prophesy that over your life. But now, the Lord will give you rest. But now, the Lord is about to give you rest. He said, but now, the God has given me rest on how many sides? And there is neither adversary nor evil occurrence. I'm in church. When God gives you rest, your adversaries are helpless. Now, church, let me tell you something about adversaries. It is adversaries that sponsor adversity. So if you have adversity in your life, it is sponsored by an adversary. Now, God says, when I give you rest, I am giving it to you from those who sponsor your adversity. Am I communicating? So you, you have to believe God that he imparts unto you his presence. When God gives you his presence, it's the greatest asset you will ever have. Listen to me. I know we live in a society that we think that the greatest asset we have is real estate. No, it's not true. The greatest asset you can ever have is God's presence. When you have his presence, everything is secure. Solomon said, but now, God has given me rest. On every side. And there is neither adversary. Nor evil occurrence. So that means when the presence of God comes on your life. Evil occurrences cease. They cease. 
They will come against you in one way, but they will flee how many ways? Seven ways. The enemy will scatter tonight. I said every enemy troubling your life will scatter tonight. Somebody shout amen. amen. Psalm 94 and verse 13. We're just going to read scriptures. Do you believe in the word of God? The Bible says we have a more sure word of prophecy. Everything I'm speaking to you is direct from God. Amen, somebody. He said, Psalm 94 and verse 13, that you may give God's people rest from the days of adversity until the pit is dug for the wicked. So God can give rest. You can look on every aspect of your life, there is rest. When it comes to your money, you are blessed. Your marriage is well. I mean, you and your, your wife are like Adam and Eve in the garden before they sin. My goodness. Ah, how many of you want marriage like that? Oh my God, you can't keep holding your wife's hands. You can't keep, stop kissing your wife. You just can't stop. I mean, two of you are walking in the mall and you're holding each other. Amen. God will give you rest. Your children are taught of the law. You look at your children, they are the best in their schools. I mean, rest on every side. That's what God is giving tonight. God is giving you rest on every side. I say, God is giving you rest on every side. Somebody shout an amen. amen. My God, Psalm 46 and verse 9. Psalm 46 and verse 9. Glory to God. 46 verse 9. The Bible says, he makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. Let's stop there. Are there wars in your life? Are the battles you are fighting right now? God says it will cease tonight. All your battles will cease tonight. I came here with a prophetic word from the Lord. That every battle in your life ceases tonight. I said it ceases tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. The wars are ceasing. I declare the wars in your life cease tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout an amen. amen. Somebody holler an amen. amen. What else does the presence of God do? You may sit down. Glory to God. The presence of God protects and preserves you from harm, from hurt, and from affliction. I can tell you, men of God, if not that we carry the presence of God, we would have been eaten like for breakfast by the devil. I mean, Satan will attack us in diverse ways. I just came back from Ghana two days ago. I came back from Ghana. I went to preach the whole week. I came back with a terrific headache. I couldn't understand where it came from. Just like that. Amen, somebody? Amen. If not for God's presence, the enemy would have eaten us for breakfast. But the presence of God preserves us. That even when the enemy comes like a flaw, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Oh yes. He said no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises in judgment against you, thou shalt condemn. Why? Because he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty God. I shall say of the Lord, you are my refuge, you are my fortress, you are my God in you do I trust. Surely you shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler. You shall cover me with your feathers and under your wings shall I trust. Your truth shall be my shield and buckler. Nothing will be able to harm you when you carry God's presence. The presence of God will defend you. Daniel chapter 3 and verse 22. Daniel 3 and verse 22. Quickly. Give that to me. Daniel chapter 3 and verse 22. The Bible said, Therefore, because the king's command was urgent, the furnace ex was the, and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Next verse. And these three men Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego fell bound in the midst of the Benefer Fairy Furnace. Keep going. King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished. He rose in a haste. Ah, your enemies are rising in a haste. <laughs> he rose up in a haste and spoke, saying to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? Look at the next verse. They answered and said, King, it is true. We threw three men into the fire. 
Look, he answered, I see the fire, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. The form of the fourth one is like the Son of God. My God, my God. I said the form of the fourth one is the Son of God. The presence of God will preserve you from hurt. The presence of God will keep you from harm. Everything they plotted against you will never succeed. Why? The presence of God is on your life. My God. He said, I see four men loosed. We threw in three men. But right now, it's no longer three. Somebody else stepped in. God is stepping in on your case today. I said, Jehovah is stepping in on your matter tonight. Glory to God. So I see four men. I don't see three anymore. Give me the next verse. Give me the next verse quickly. Verse 26. Then Nebuchadnezzar went near the mouth of the burning fairy furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out. Come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came from the midst of the fire. Nezres. And the satraps, administrators, governors, kings, counselors gathered together. And they saw these men on whose bodies the fire had no power. And the hair of their head was, was single, was, was what? Not stained. Or their garments affected. Next verse. And the smell of the fire was not on them. <sighs> Listen. Whatever you have been through, whatever you have been going through, as you come out from me tonight, there will be no smell of fire on you. Oh yes. I'm telling you. Get ready. Something is about to explode in your life. He says, and the smell of the fire was not on them. Keep going. Keep going. Man, you guys are, boy, you can pull something out of it. I feel empty already. He says, Nebuchadnezzar spoke. Mm. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent an angel from his presence <laughs> and delivered his servants. Who trusted? Ah, ah, ya bada gada bada gada, and they have frustrated the king's word. In the name of Jesus, you will frustrate every demonic decree. You will frustrate the demonic decrees. In the name of Jesus Christ, they frustrated the king's word. That means no matter if we decrees that are issued from our government, we can frustrate them. By what? The presence of God. We can frustrate them. Don't mind what they say. We don't fight with them. That's why we don't, we don't talk against them. We just advise them. Because they are, they are on the other side. They don't know what we have. Something you and I have, they don't have is God's presence. And whatever decrees have been made against the church, we will frustrate those decrees. We'll frustrate them. Glory to God. Next verse. Next verse. Keep going. Therefore, I make a decree. Now the decree changed. He said, I make a new decree that any people, any nation, any language which speaks anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Apostle Felix, Prophet Leon and his wife shall not be, oh boy, they shall be cut in pieces. And their house is made in a heap. He says he changed his decree. The presence of God changes decrees. When the enemy comes and makes his own decree against your life, the presence of God will frustrate them and change the decrees. Oh yes. It will change the decrees. Somebody say amen. amen. The presence of God gives you divine immunity. You are immune from trouble. Trouble will come and they go. They, you don't look like you went through trouble. You know some of you right now, if you tell people what you've been through in the past two years, they can't believe. Are you saying you went through all this and you are still sane? You're still normal? Why? The presence of God is with me. I carry God's presence. So it makes the difference. I carry God's presence. And I'm not bothered by what the enemy is doing. 
the enemy can throw himself left and right. He said, a thousand shall fall on your right side. Ten thousand on your... He said, none shall come near you. Only with your eyes you will behold and see the reward of the wicked. Only with your eyes you will see the reward of the wicked. Church, 1 Samuel chapter 18 and verse 12. 1 Samuel 18 and verse 12. Glory to God. Now Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him mm, and departed but had departed from Saul. Church, I don't understand how a king can be afraid of a 17-year-old boy. That means Saul saw something. David is a little boy. But the Bible said the king was afraid. Church, listen to me. Time is coming when the kings of this earth will be afraid of you. Oh, man. You know, church, I know we respect dignitaries. We respect so many of these people. And, and to be honest, I mean, I'm, I'm now, I'm beginning to come close to many of these people. I'm beginning to come to, I mean, they come to our church. Some of them will just call me and say, we are coming to worship. I mean, recently, one of the, uh, should I say that, Lord? Okay. I will say it. One of the top, I mean, in the top leadership of this nation needed to read something to the na whole nation. And he, for, he sent it to me first. He said, Fundisi, read through this and tell me what you think. I proofread it, sent it back to him. And I said, all in order. I said, but there are things you need to put here, put there. And I said, thank you, leadership, for trusting me with this level of information. Church, you don't understand. God can raise you in the middle of nothing. I'm in church. <laughs> For some of us, everybody thought we can't amount to anything because we are in a strange land. No. It doesn't matter. Joseph became a prime minister in a foreign land. Nobody asked Joseph, where is your ID? No, where, do you have document for South Africa? Where, 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 where is your passport? I mean, dude, the guy has nothing. No ID, no driver's license, no form of identification. And yet, he was made a prime minister. And now you are telling me you are South African? You are in South Africa. God is taking you straight to the top. Saul was afraid of David. Why? Because God was with him. Church, when God is with you, no harm can befall you. God will preserve you from hurt. Give me Isaiah 43 and verse 1 to 3. Isaiah 43 and verse 1 to 3. This is God talking to you. But now, thus saith the Lord, who created you, O encounter church. He who formed you. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. Next verse. Next verse. Give me next verse. I have called you by your name. That means I know all of you by name. Don't think you are just in this crowd and God doesn't know you. He knows the number of hair on your head. He knows them one by one. He said, I've called you and I know you by name. Keep going. He said, I have called you and you are mine. Next verse. Keep going. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk in the, through the fire, you shall not be burnt, my God, nor shall the flame scorch against you. Whatever you are going through, you are coming out victorious. Every challenge in your life right now, I prophesy, you are coming out victorious. In the name of Jesus Christ. My God, that's how God works. Just verify that God is with you. All you need to check is, Lord, are you with me? I went to Atlanta, Georgia to preach. And on our way back, as we were approaching Johannesburg, the plane began to dance. My God, I'm not talking. I mean, when we landed, the, 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 the pilot says, in my 39 years of flying, I've never seen, experienced this. I mean, the plane, my wife was, my wife was dead already. She was in heaven. <laughs> My wife was crying, not, I'm not joking, with tears all over her face. 
I began to jagade braha badagaya. Magabada kropa laga brade kete. Zefra kopa liga brakata. I mean, I was praying out loud. To the point when we landed, Muslims began to thank me. Listen. Oh boy. When you are on a flight and the enemy is threatening for the plane to crash, just verify that God is with you. Just find out that God is around. And every storm will clear up. Man, I was, I was, I was praying. But I mean, it was really a bad storm. The plane just, all of a sudden, we would just drop. It was bad. Everybody in that flight knew that that was the last day. But I checked. And I saw that God is with Apostle Felix. I just went to preach the gospel in Atlanta, Georgia. I won souls for the Lord. And I verified, I said, Lord, what is going on in this flight? He said, I am with you. So therefore, the plane is coming down softly. And here am I today. Just check whether God is with you. When he's with you, don't worry, relax. Relax, no matter what the devil is doing. When God is with you, he will sort out everything. Look at Paul's experience. Acts chapter 27 and verse 9. Acts 27 and verse 9. My God. Acts 20, 27 and verse 9. Now, when much time had been spent, and sailing was dangerous because the fast was already over, Paul advised them, Nezves, saying, Men, I perceive that this voyage will end with disaster and much less. Not only the cargo and the ship, but also our lives. But then something else happened. Give me verse 22. All of a sudden, in verse 22, and now I urge you, take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only the ship. Next verse. For there stood Kalabandayaha, an angel of the Lord, whose of to whom I belong and whom I serve. An angel showed up from God's presence and stood by me and said, This ship is going, is not sinking. You are not losing your life. I prophesy to somebody here today. They said you will die this year. You are going to fulfill your days. You will live to your good old age. You will see your children's children. Somebody shout, I receive it. Say, for there stood by me this night an angel of the Lord. Somebody holler the angel of his presence. Say it like you are serious, the angel of his presence. That angel is going with you tonight. I said, that angel is going home with you tonight. Somebody shout, I receive it. My God, look at the next verse. Next verse. Saying, do not be afraid. Every time God shows up in a man's life, he will tell you, don't fear. Relax, man. When I'm there, don't fear. Church, don't fear. That rent will not overwhelm you. The loss of your job will not overwhelm you. That's why I like the testimony of the, is it Padiachis or, yeah, I mean, their testimony. Overwhelming testimony lost everything but I thank God that in his kingdom he has made provision for restoration mm. church you don't understand restoration is when God decides to bypass all protocol ah, Dabahasha. Let, let me use two people come this is what restoration is now look at these two guys alright please come come to the middle now, these two guys got married, okay? No, 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 they, they got married on their own. He has a wife, he has a wife. Okay, so this guy, immediately he married. First year, he got a child. Second year, he got a child. Third year, he got the third one. Now, this guy is struggling to have a baby. So, if you look at it now, move forward. So, right now, he has overtaken this guy. Now, 
if God shows up after 10 years, gives this guy a child, that is not restoration. That is just progress. So that means he just takes a step. A step. But restoration is when God now shows up here and decides to give him triplets. <laughs> so, so now he catches up with the guy who has gone ahead 10 years after. So God now said to David, God, David lost everything. They took their wives, took their children. And David knew what to do. He went before God and said, Lord, these people have taken everything. My people have even gathered to stone me. He said, now what do I do? God said to him, you shall pursue them. And surely you will recover all. I don't know who is here that I've lost so much in COVID. You lost so much to the pandemic. Today, as a servant of God, I prophesy your restoration. I prophesy your restoration. I prophesy your restoration. Somebody shout, I receive it. So that's restoration. Thank you, sir. That's what restoration. And in this kingdom, we have restoration. So if you feel that people have gone ahead of you, don't worry, relax. You know, when the Lord called me to ministry, he told me to start our church 10 years ago. So, I mean, I've had the call of God since I was 24. Now, I finished Bible school at 26. And, I mean, Jesus appeared to me. <laughs> that, it was an encounter I will never forget. You know, there's something about encounter that makes you pursue God. You know, since Jesus appeared to me, I have been crazy for him. Pray that God will give you an encounter tonight. I really, I really pray that God gives you an encounter tonight. No, we are a church of power. He said, if the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells on the inside of you, that same spirit shall quicken your mortal body. Shall quicken. walk past you, not me. My shadow is healing the sea. Now imagine if you have that type of anointing and you walk into the mayor's office, you walk into the MEC's office, you walk into the premier's office, you walk into the president's office, your shadow will be breaking him fall under power. We need such anointing and you are getting it today. Something is coming on you today that will change your life forever. We need such presence. We are our shadows will be doing miracles. Not just us, our shadow. Anything you touch heals the sea. I finished preaching one day and one of my daughters walked to me and said, my, Daddy, my mother is in a critical state in hospital. I said, I can't go to hospital now. I just finished preaching. I didn't sleep the whole night. I was in prayer. So I took the handkerchief I used to wipe my face. I said, take it. Go lay it on your mother. Oh, <laughs> as soon as the handkerchief touched the mother's head, bam, she woke up. Came out of the hospital. Am I talking to somebody? Man of God, one day I was in my office. No, I was sleeping. In the night, I get a phone call. Pastor, she's dead. She's dead. She's dead. I say, who is dead? He said, my wife. I say, where are you? He said, I'm in hospital. I say, put the phone in her ears. My yeah, 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 yeah. And she put the phone. 
I said in the name of Jesus I rebuke the spirit of death I command you come back to life as I finished prayer the guy didn't know when I finished I hung up so he checked the phone because the wife is dead he is alive he put the phone on the woman's ears and he didn't know when I finished prayer beloved this happened Saturday early hours of the morning on Sunday before the God I serve two of them walked into my office the husband and the wife came into everything dead in your life is coming alive today everything dead in your life is coming alive in the name of Jesus he said where the word of the king is there is power you can't there is nothing you can do against the word of God where his word comes everything must obey I'm telling you when the word of the Lord comes everything in your life must line up the word of the king nothing can resist it nothing I'm telling you when you receive the word of God all you need to do is just relax and watch God do what he has to do God's presence can change anything lastly God's presence can give you promotion God's presence the Bible said then the king promoted Daniel why because he carried the presence the same presence saved him from the lions den. how do you explain a lion or lions with a human being right in front of them and they can't move they all paralyze their mouth is short they can't eat God made sure he shot their appetite when they saw Daniel they saw lion like them they couldn't eat him because lion doesn't eat lion you can never see a lion eat another lion it's impossible so when Daniel showed up that the presence of the lion of the tribe of Judah made Daniel a lion made him a lion that's why you must never carry yourself like a wimp no the Bible said the wicked flees when no man pursues but the righteous is as bold as a lion the righteous is bold the righteous is bold you need to be bold be bold I was in my office with my son here and these certain people from the Freemason came into my office and said you are what you are doing is disturbing us you need to move out from here I say eh? Uh, uh, how dare you I mean how can you be in your house you decide to walk into a lion's den and threaten the lion he was there he said to me if you don't move out we are bringing our satanist group we are going to dance by the gate of the church let us see who we enter here alive ah Beloved, I was sitting down when he said it. I stood up. I said, you return back to this land and you are alive. God didn't call me. Get out of my office. You don't let anybody threaten you. No, you are a child of God. The lion of the tribe of Judah lives in you. Let no one threaten you. I'm telling you, you carry God's presence. Nobody can threaten a lion. The Bible, the lion does not flee from anybody. No, it doesn't run. It says, the lion, strongest among the beasts, and turneth not away for any. It doesn't turn away. How dare you come to our property, property that is in our name? You're telling me to move out because we are disturbing what you are doing. You and your father, the devil, I will eat you for breakfast. So you know what I did, Apostle? The next day, I took a bottle of anointing oil. Went to the gate where they want to dance. I laid flat on the gate with my whole body. This is at 12 midnight. They thought they were planning, but I had overtaken them. I laid by the gate with my whole clothes on the floor. Anybody that shows up here and pass by this gate, I declare them dead in the name of Jesus. 
And this is years later. They never showed up. Everybody still comes to church alive. Am I talking to somebody? Don't let the enemy threaten you. You have been threatened for too long. Your boss comes out and tells you you will lose your job. Tell him in one week. In fact, if he gives you one week, give him one hour. Oh yes, anytime the enemy threatens you, if he gives you one month to die, give him one day. So that he will not be alive to perform his enterprise. Look, I believe in God showing mercy to the wicked, but sometimes there are just some wicked that just won't repent. And if I find such people, I just kill you so that I can rest. There is a reason why the Bible says, suffer not a witch to live. The truth is, it's not that we can't give the witch a chance to repent. But you see, there is a wickedness that goes with witchcraft. That's why God says so. Because the moment you leave a witch, he will, if he can't get you, he will leave you and go be with somebody else. So you that has the power, you better end him. I was in my office. One of my daughter came in after Sunday service and said to me, Dad, I woke up in the night. My grandmother was doing this over my body. I mean, strange things. You know, we black people, we have some strange things. I tell you. <laughs> Believe me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know some of you, you guys don't have a clue. Uh, you know, uh, you guys, you guys don't know how far. No, 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 no. When you come amongst us blacks, we have issues. Major issues. I mean, somebody wake up at 2 in the morning, the, ma the grandmother is doing this over her. So when she woke up, the grand, she's 24 years. The grandmother said, so you woke up. Meaning what she's doing. This, my daughter is not supposed to wake up. So now I'm in my office. I finished preaching. She walks into my office and says, dad, I had an experience last night. I don't know what to do with it. I woke up at night. My grandmother was doing this over me. And when I woke up, she asked me, so you woke up. Then I said, listen. Your grandmother is a witch. I asked her, how old is she? She said, she's 86. I said, okay, how old are you? She said, I'm 24. I said, now, is either you live or she lives? Is either you die or she dies? You choose one. So she looks at me very wise. She says, dad, I'm 24. She's 86. I prefer to live. Let her go. <laughs> Beloved, I'm not lying to you. True story. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I terminate your grandmother's life. That was it. This is Sunday. The same Sunday, she slept. On Monday morning, she calls me. My grandmother didn't wake up. There are people you just don't act. I mean, they, they've chosen to be wicked. They've just chosen that they will be wicked all their lives. They're not going to repent. How can a grandmother want her daughter, granddaughter to die? You know why? Because what she's doing in church is affecting her. So now she wants to eliminate her so she can carry out her enterprise. Because you carry the light. You, something you don't know. Let me tell you. When they, you see, some of us don't see who we are. It is the enemy that's in darkness. When they see you, they see the mark of our Lord Jesus. So that's why when a witch sees you, anywhere they are, they will know that this guy is in the light. Because they can see the light on you. They can see it. So you don't allow such people, when they've decided that, look, this one, we're not going to allow them make progress. I don't play with such things. You don't threaten me and I keep quiet. No. Because I understand the enemy. He doesn't just threaten. He threatens you and he means business. So for me, let me rather finish you before you finish me. That's how I, listen, I know, I know, I know so many pastors, when they see witches, they pray for mercy. I don't. I'm from an environment where it's either you eat or be eaten. Now I told you guys, you guys are white. You, you guys, you don't understand. Our environment. Ah. Uh, <laughs> 
Have you seen Tokoloshi? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some of you, you, you have no idea. Ah, oh, yeah, Jesus. You have, you have absolutely no idea. When you see some strange things, you, it's not somebody that will tell you to pray. I mean, some of us, we wake up at night to pray because of the forces that are fighting us. When we were building our building, my wife used to tell me, he said, baby, something is wrong with you. I said, what? She says, in the night, you will just fly out of your sleep. Like I'll be sleeping, I'll jump out of the bed, to run a little bit and walk back to the bed. Now, I did that. I didn't even know I was doing it because there were forces pursuing me. So you want to build God a house. We will destroy you. They were after my life. That's why anytime you are ready to do anything for God, get ready for battle. Many, many church people, many church people are not ready for battle. Whenever you want to do anything for God, get ready for a fight. Because Satan is not going to let go. It's not going to let go. So you get ready for the battle. You must prepare for warfare. We are living in those days now where Christians can't be lazy in prayer anymore. When there is a prayer meeting in church, you better show up. When there is fasting, that's not time to eat. You better show up. These are the days we are in the middle of warfare. In the middle of battles. The enemy is not playing games. He's not joking. And so you and I must brace up for the challenge. We must get ready for warfare. Get ready for battle. Because the enemy is not going to watch us take over. But whether he likes it or not, the prophecy of God's word must come to pass. It must come to pass. Oh, it has to come to pass. It's called the angel of his presence. When that angel shows up, everything changes. Lift up your hands to heaven with your eyes closed. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Oh, yes. Thank you. Oh, I can feel his presence descending in this place. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. The hour has come. Oh yes. Move in this place. Let your presence. Let the angel of his presence. Let it be released right now. The angel of his presence. Holy Ghost. Oh yes, yes. I feel the power descending. I feel the glory descending. Yes. His presence. His presence. I want more of you, Jesus. I want more of your presence. I want more of your anointing. More of your glory. Holy Spirit. Ready amande breki fala membradisha. Mayala ba shade ba katize. Mende keli mambrando korobo sete brede de debo. Riga bada yala braga ba yada gada ba. Shade bede gade ba la gada gaya gadosh. Mande de 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 debo shori yala bada gada. Shada yada brada gada barada yala gada ba. Masekete brega de legedesh reto kosi frate periakota beleketiza bradi gabaso leke brida falamante embreki saki lavada sheikato leke suzi bradi kibadosa Holy Ghost move in this place touch 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 Lord let your presence the angel of your presence let him move in this congregation. Mashaya yamande kosa brada gada radish shedi alibados. Thank you, Jesus. With your hands lifted up, Father, let your presence, your glory, let it fall right now. 
as your eyes are closed let the fire from his presence come on you right now it's going to come on you like a warm fire it's going to come oh yes let that presence move in this place holy spirit from my right to my left let the glory of god yes lord i see the angel of the lord descend in this place yes lord touch lord touch touch in a special way touch holy spirit touch spirit of god move in this place and touch lives touch holy ghost yes yes please help, help them help them please please jesus holy ghost jesus let his presence move in your life right now his presence oh yes i feel that fire that fire is coming it's coming it's coming right now receive it receive receive power of the holy ghost power let the fire of God fall. Let it fall upon you right now. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. I feel his presence. Oh, yes. It's moving. It's moving. Oh, yes. That angel is touching someone right here. Right now. Right now. The fire is falling on you. Holy Ghost, please help him, help him. Shande Kopaliga Bragados. Yes, Lord. As I stretch my hands, I rebuke sicknesses. I rebuke pains. I rebuke diseases. I rebuke cancer. I rebuke every infirmity. Your spirit of infirmity. Get out in the name of Jesus. I bind you right now and I release the presence of God presence Holy Spirit Jesus thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord listen to me if you have any pain in your body just lay your hand on where the pain is right now you have any pain in your body any kind of sickness if it's somewhere you can't lay your hand just lay your hand on your head lay your hand on your head right now if you can't lay your hand on the part that is hurting lay your hand right now in the name of jesus i take authority and dominion over every pain in your body every sickness every disease every spirit of infirmity i speak to you by the authority of god's word and in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god i command you pain i command you sickness i command you disease be bound in the name of jesus get out right now leave leave right now get out get out right now get out come out in the name of jesus and i release the healing power the healing power the healing power of jesus let it flow in this place let it flow right now be healed in your body be healed in your spine be healed in your bones be healed in your chest be healed in your bones be healed in your blood be healed right now in the name of jesus i declare you totally free in jesus precious name and the church that believe gives jesus a shout Now, church, I just prayed for you. If you had any pain and you don't have it anymore, I just want you to signify by the raising off of your hand. You had a pain 
and the pain is gone. Can I just take two people? Let me hear from two people. Yes, sir. Please come from the back. Come quickly. Let me hear from you. Come. There's another person. Some people that raised their hand right here. You had a pain and the pain is gone. Just raise your hand. Raise your hand. I just want two or three people. Just come. Come. All right. Can we have a microphone? All right. All right. Tell us what happened to you. So I had a bad back. Muscle in my shoulder that was pulling for over two weeks now. Right. And I just completely gave myself over now and it just went away. It just disappeared. Yeah. Somebody give Jesus praise. Give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. You are completely healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, man. Tell us what happened to you right now. I've got a severe back problem. Right. And it was just heating and it like a click. And it, it just is gone. Yeah. Come on, somebody give Jesus praise. Give Jesus praise. There's somebody else. All right, tell us what happened to you. Well, now, hold a... on, hold on. You know the reason why I call these people out? I just want you to know you have been touched by the presence of God. Because for some of us, we don't believe these things until we see evidence that God really was here. Or God is here. Amen, somebody. Amen. So tell us what happened to you. Well, I had a, a pinch in my back. Right. And um, it was very painful. Right. Couldn't even get up the stairs and stand up during the service. But I just forced myself and I said, Lord, right. um, doesn't matter what happened, Satan's not going to win this battle. Yeah. And... Um, I was diagnosed with lupus in 2017 right. and some of my tests came back ne negative and um, also I have a testimony about my um, x-rays coming back clean so I am healed I believe I'm healed Father in the name of Jesus I perfect your health today be totally healed from the top of your head to the sole of your feet be free now in the name of Jesus you are completely healed in Jesus name amen yes tell us what happened to you yes um. <laughs> go ahead go ahead um. I know you have tears all over your eyes please give a <laughs> tissue paper or something um, I just had a massive headache and back pain and when everyone was jumping up I wasn't able to jump up with them right. now and I just like laid my hand and it was when I lifted it, it was gone. Like, Come on. <laughs> Give Jesus praise. Completely. Glory to God. Give us a song. Let's worship him. Let's worship him. Let's worship him. Just worship him. Give us a song. Everything is changing. The fire. Got it. 
get seated. Everybody sit. Every head bowed or eyes closed. Every head bowed or eyes closed. I want to give somebody here an opportunity. You have not made Jesus the Lord of your life. Listen, the greatest miracle you can ever receive is the seed of God's Son inside your life. Christ in you is the hope of glory. You are here tonight and you are not born again. There is no need to pretend. Don't fake what can be real. Don't fake what is real. You are here and you say, Apostle, I'm not born again. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to be born again. I want to have this experience of the new birth. If that is you, wherever you are, just raise your hand. Raise your hand quickly. I want to pray with you. Raise up your hand where you are. Just raise it. Signify by just raising your hand. You want to give your life to Jesus. You want to be born again. You want to have this experience. For some of you, you're looking at, thank you, ma'am. Keep your hands up. Keep it up. Keep it up. You're saying to yourself, you know, I, I, I don't understand why these people are so happy, why they are rejoicing. I don't know why, what is making them excited. It's because of the hope we have. So you are here and you want to give your life to Jesus. Truly, genuinely want to turn your life to Christ. Join these people and raise your hand. Raise it now, quickly. Quickly. Across this auditorium. Quickly. Another person would say to me, Apostle, I once gave my life to Christ. But somehow I'm backsliding. I, I've had so much experiences in my life that has made me kind of take a back seat. And right now, I'm not sure where I stand with my faith in God. And I would love to rededicate my life to Jesus. If that is you, can you just join these people and raise your hand? Raise your hand where you are. Raise it up quickly. Thank you. Thank you. Every head bowed, nobody looking around, all eyes closed. If you raised your hand, can you please stand where you are? Stand up, please. Stand up. Stand up. Don't be ashamed. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. All right. Keep standing. Keep standing. Keep standing. Father, as a matter of fact, can you just take a walk and come to the front? Please come. 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 Church, rejoice in the Lord. The Bible said there is rejoicing in the presence of God and the angels. Over the salvation of one soul. Glory to God. Please come. Come. All right. Wow. So many souls. Church, give Jesus praise. I want you to bow your heads. Close your eyes and pray this prayer. Mean it with all your heart. Say, dear Lord Jesus. I thank you for dying for me on the cross. I believe with my heart that you are the son of God. You died for me on the third day. You rose from the dead. I now receive you into my heart as my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me all of my sins and my past. And I declare boldly that Jesus is the Lord of my life. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus name. Amen. Let me pray for you. Bow your heads. Father in the name of Jesus. I just want to thank you for these precious souls. Father upon their confession in our Lord Jesus Christ. And in the resurrection. As a church the Bible says whosoever sins will remit is remitted. We declare their sins forgiven. Father cancel their name from the book of death. And write it in the book of life. And we pray that the grace that brought them out here will preserve them in the kingdom. Thank you, Lord, for saving them today. Father, and I declare that every curse in their life is broken right now. And I speak the blessing of Abraham into their spirit, man. In the name of Jesus, from today, you will enjoy the newness of life in Christ Jesus. And I bless you, and I bless your destiny in Christ in Jesus name amen. amen all right now quickly do we take them somewhere 
All right, you're going to go with this man in blue. Please go with them. We just want to take your name and your number so we can be in touch with you to help you maintain this decision you've made today. Please, can you go with them? Go with them quickly, quickly, quickly. Just go with them quickly. Church, why don't you celebrate Jesus? Celebrate Jesus. Listen, you know, church, I always say that if these people were the reason why this conference was organized, it was completely worth it. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You don't know what's happening right now in the presence of God. Angels are dancing. They are rejoicing that people have left the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God. Judge, stretch your hands towards me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak your blessing over this congregation. I speak your blessing over this house. Lord, when I was praying in the place of prayer, you said I should pray for your servant and his dear wife and this church. That the same way you did a miracle for us to purchase a property that is over 45 million. Father, right now, I release that same grace in this assembly. Whatever money is required to purchase the property they want to buy, I release that grace now in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, and I bless this assembly. And I declare, Father, this is the beginning of great things. I pray, Father, Lord, that the next time I will see these people, their testimonies will put tears in people's eyes. Give them tearful testimonies. Testimonies that will shock the world and shock their environment. Father, I bless them. I bless the work of their hands. I bless their bodies. I bless their marriages. I bless this house. I bless the work of their hands. In the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, such as you have given to me, I now release to this congregation. Father, many years ago, I was struggling financially. And you said to me, my son, in blessing, I have blessed you. In multiplying, I've multiplied you. And from that day, poverty was over. And you told me that this grace you have given to me, everywhere I go, where I'm received, I shall release it. Therefore, Lord, today, as I've done this in many places, and there are so many testimonies, today, the grace that makes for wealth. I bow my knees on this altar. The scripture says, you said to Moses, gather me the 70 elders in the assembly of the tabernacle and I will take of the spirit that is upon you and I will place it on them that they may bear the burden with you. Father, this house is part of the kingdom of God that is doing God's purpose in this nation. Therefore, Lord, your servant needs these men and women to be raised in the area of wealth so that they can help him bear the burden. Therefore, Father, today, that grace for wealth that you have given to me, many years ago, you spoke to me and said, go and make my people rich. Therefore, I stretch my hands to this congregation and I release the grace that makes for wealth. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Everything you do from today, the blessing of the Lord is added on it now. The blessing that makes it rich and has no sorrow comes on you now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I raise millionaires, billionaires in this house. Men and women that will finance the gospel. Men and women that will build buildings for the gospel. Build hospitals, build schools, men and women that will tithe in 10 millions, in 15 million, in 100 million. I raise them right now in the name of Jesus. That grace sits on you now and will never leave you. From today, I turn you loose from the thousands to the millions. I release you now from the millions to the billions. In the name of Jesus. I command the flow of wealth into your hands. I declare supernatural wealth transfer. Supernatural wealth transfer. Companies will be handed over to you for free. 
lands will be handed over to you for free cars will be given to you for free properties will be given to you for free I declare supernatural wealth transfer in this house right now in the name of Jesus that grace sits on you now and it sits on this house father as you have commanded me so I've done and I declare it shall be permanent nothing shall change it nothing shall be added nor removed from it this decree is final and it shall never be otherwise in the name of God the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit and it's in Jesus name we pray amen Put your hands together for the Lord.